Hello everyone. Welcome to this presentation. My name is Dr. Tahseen Anwarashi, Director for Innovation and Entrepreneurship at the American University of Russell Fema. I'm presenting this paper on behalf of my co-authors, Dr. Wazir Jan Begum, Associate Dean, School of Business, American University, Dr. Abdul Fattah, American University, Mr. Zhuang Chan, and Govind, Dr. Govinda Swami, who are the co-authors for this paper. The title of this paper is A Cross-Legged Study of Gender Discrimination in Entry-Level Jobs, a Vulnerability Theory Perspective. The presentation is arranged in this format. Start with the introduction, then I will be discussing the research gap and aims. I will be discussing the theoretical background, leading to the discussion on the hypothesis, followed by research design and methodology, population sample and data collection methods, analysis of the findings and then presenting the key findings after that, followed by discussion and implications, and finally ending with a discussion on limitations and future research directions and references are given at the end of this presentation. So this paper, as you must have guessed from the title, is about discrimination. Discrimination occurs when individuals are treated indifferently owing to the demographic characteristics or association with a social group. And specifically, gender inequality is a significant reason for women's discrimination in the workplace. A possible solution to gender discrimination that is suggested in the literature is resilience, which can reduce women's vulnerability and enable them to deal with discrimination. Resilience is an individual's ability to cope and to deal and to sustain uh, you know, the, the psychological elements associated with discrimination. So what are the aims and objectives of the study? This study aims to analyze the drivers of gender discrimination in entry level jobs in the Malaysian retail sector. And the study utilizing vulnerability theory unpacks the drivers that make women vulnerable due to preconceived notions leading to gender discrimination and investigates causal, a reversed causal and reciprocal relationships between them. So we are not only looking at one directional relationship, uh, but we are looking at whether you know, the drivers of discrimination act mutually in a reciprocal relationship or reverse causal relationship. That means the discrimination itself cause, encourages the drivers or the drivers cause discrimination or there is a reciprocal relationship. We came up uh, with these aims based on the research gaps that were identified. Firstly, at the theoretical level, perceived gender discrimination. We are saying not that there, we are not saying that there is a gender discrimination, but this is perceived. It may or may not exist, but you know, women may perceive that there is a gender discrimination in the entry level jobs in modern day workplaces. And the theoretical background, as we said, is in the vulnerability theory itself. Particularly feminist theories have primarily informed early research on gender inequality. But the research gap is that only few studies have tested the construct stability over time to determine the causal reversed and reciprocal relationships. So the perceived gender discrimination may vary over a period of time. So it is important that this construct is tested over a period of time, and that is why this study's research design, which is causal reverse and reciprocal relationship over a period of time, can shed more light on the construct's stability over a period of time. Moreover, since the perception of bias may change over time, these longitudinal studies are very rare to find in discrimination literature. And at the practical level, vulnerability theory in entry-level paid jobs, uh, which drives economic pressures for women, has not been well investigated. 
So there are research gaps at the theoretical as well as practical and methodological level because this research design has not been followed in discrimination studies, which is the longitudinal design. So <clears throat> what is the theoretical background and specifically the vulnerability theory? that all human beings are embedded in social relationships and institutions. Therefore, they universally and constantly face vulnerability throughout their lives. And human vulnerability arises from their dependency on other individuals, social groups, institutions, and in this case, the organizations. However, Cooper contended that the universality or the application of vulnerability theory is in question arguing that individuals in societies are privileged based on social status, gender, race, and religion, which may not be the same for all social contexts. It may vary on so different social contexts. So that is uh, an assumption of the vulnerability theory, which can be challenged. Nonetheless, because different social groups are vulnerable, an individual's ability to deal with vulnerable situations is a central premise of the vulnerability theory. And this is where resilience come into picture because resilience provides individuals, you know, the, the capacity, the ability to deal with vulnerable situations. And therefore resilience is a major characteristic that enables individuals to mitigate the adverse effects of discrimination. So against this theoretical background, we developed seven hypotheses related to women discrimination. So the first one is perceived economic compulsion makes women vulnerable to workplace discrimination over time. The second one, organizational injustice makes women vulnerable to workplace discrimination over time. Number three, stereotyping is a driver that makes vulnerable uh, women vulnerable to workplace over time. Number four, perceived societal discrimination at the societal level, at a macro level, makes women vulnerable. Number five, over time, women's discrimination has a reverse causal effect on vulnerability enhancing discriminators. So it's not only the drivers are causing discrimination, but the discrimination itself may have a reverse causal effect on the on the on the drivers. Women's discrimination and vulnerability enhancing discriminators have mutual impacts over time, which is a reciprocal relationship. And finally, at seven, resilience moderates the relationship between the vulnerability enhancing discriminators and women's workplace discrimination over time. So we look at the moderating role of resilience in mitigating the causal reverse or reciprocal relationships. So it's a complex model that we are looking at in this study. So <clears throat> the methodology for this is primarily a, a quantitative approach to study and utilize, uh, therefore we utilize a questionnaire survey to collect the data because we wanted to collect the data from large number of uh, women workers to understand their perception about discrimination at workplace. So the authors collected data at time one and at time two at an interval of 12 months from the same sample. Further, the survey questions asked on discriminatory practices related to pay, promotion, and discriminatory comments based on scoping review by De La Tolle Perez, who did a similar study. <clears throat> the gender stereotyping role was adapted from the scale developed by Mills and by Fab Fabris help to develop measures related to stereotyping. The organizational justice scale developed by Shiboka et al. informed the study on administrative injustice or justice. <clears throat> Further, the study measured perceived societal discrimination uh, using the everyday discrimination scale developed by Michaels et al. 2019. So those were the scales that informed the measures of, of the questionnaire. The sample, the target, population consisted of women working in the retail sector in the three regions in Klang Valley, Selangor, and Petaling Jaya, which includes the capital city of Kuala Lumpur. So basically from Malaysia. First, 500 questionnaires were distributed to female entry-level and frontline retail staff 
using random sampling, and 364 were received, and 349 responded, responded, responses were found to fit for analysis at time one. And similarly, 348 were received at time two, 346 was received, and 348 uh, were found to be appropriate uh, to, for analysis. So the results of this model, first of all, the model we tried to, as I indicated earlier, we wanted to, to test the stability of this construct and through autoregressive effects. So in this model, we are looking at the causal, first model, second, reverse causal, model two, and in model three, we're looking at reciprocal relationship. And model four, the authors have added the autoregressive auto effects to reduce any biased estimation of the cross-legged effects over it because it's a longitudinal study. So this is the model that is being tested. Four models are being tested here. Now the results show that there is a causal reverse and reciprocal relationship between the factors. If you look at the SEM model here, the parameter estimates of the moderation model which is lagged effect, are showing significant um, values. Especially the p-values are ranging from less than 0 0.05 to less than 0 0.001. And uh, the coefficient values for all the drivers in the black paths shows for number one, say, Perceived economic compulsion, 0 0.46, highly significant. Organizational justice, 0 0.41, highly significant. Stereotyping, 0 0.53, highest, highly significant. Resilience has a negative impact on women's discrimination, as hypothesized. And then the multiplied parts, which is we are looking at the moderation effects also says that there is a moderation of resilience on all these factors. The causal effects are there as well. Similar figures shown in the in the coefficient values in this model. So finally, we found that the vulnerability of women's discrimination reinforces the discriminatory drivers because there is a reciprocal relationship. Therefore, it is inappropriate to discuss women's discrimination in isolation of vulnerability. The study found that most discrimination occurs not because of male dominance or a conscious desire to discriminate. Instead, it happens unintentionally because the existing perceptions make women vulnerable to discrimination. Vulnerability theory, therefore, is at the heart of this study, and it was helpful in making these conclusions as it informed the study about the vulnerability of individuals due to various conditions. The study's findings provide insights in how individual res individuals' resilience determines their susceptibility, not to the situation alone. Resilience offers psychological empowerment to deal with discriminatory practices. Boardman et al. particularly and Shahana and Hofer explained that men and women express resilience differently as they socialize in different environments. Therefore, women's ability to show resilience is very important to deal with uh, discrimination against women. The authors recommend, therefore, developing emotional and psychological strength through self-awareness, social skills, and optimism among women. What are the implications of this study? As it says, the study has several implications. First, there is a need to reduce the stereotypes and societal discrimination by challenging the perceptions and building collective resilience in the society. And everyone has to play a role, the government, the media, education, business chambers of commerce, retail sector associations should reinforce positive perceptions about women in workplace and enhance so social resources to build women's resilience. In addition, at a societal level, family and school-centered programs can support equality values in the community. Relevant stakeholders should provide therapeutic intervention for highly vulnerable employees and families. 
Secondly, retail sector employees should become more sensitive to the need of women's equality and take steps to improve organizational justice. These movements could lead to women's organizations, especially created to estimate gender discrimination in the workplace in Malaysia. And finally, all stakeholders should identify the most common vulnerabilities of women, change their institutional perceptions of them, and strengthen gender equality values and culture. By taking all these measures, the study hopes that women's discrimination would be substantially reduced in entry level jobs in the Malaysian retail sector. The study has some uh, limitations because the study was only focused on the retail sector in Klang Valley, which has limited generalizability. So we cannot at this moment generalize the findings to the large uh, or the, the entire retail sector in Malaysia. But of course, this study provides an indication of those um, factors. Furthermore, the study tested only the vulnerability enhancing discriminators deductively derived from the literature. It did not explore inductively into any other further discriminatory behaviors or 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 uh, drivers that could also be responsible that could not be included in the study. Future studies could use qualitative approach, an inductive approach, an exploratory approach to find more or new uh, drivers of discrimination or a more nuanced and specific discriminators that are not overtly evident in different sectors or which could not be tested deductively through this study. So those are the or the directions for future research, and we have listed the references in this study. Uh, not all references could be listed here, but some select and important references are listed for your uh, references. Since this is a recorded presentation, I'm unable to answer questions at this stage, but I will be happy to answer any questions which can be sent to us through email or through any other means and we'll be happy to answer those questions related to this study. Thank you very much for listening to this presentation, and I wish the conference all the best. Thank you very much.